don't keep you too long, so I don't keep you too long. Let's be going over to uh, the 40th book of the Bible. And if you are able and willing, if you'll stand with me, as we go over to the book of Matthew, and we're going to be looking at chapter number 12. And I just want to read one verse in your hearing on this evening. The book of Matthew, chapter number 12, and we'll be taking a look at um, verse number 29. And I'm reading from the NIV, and the verse says, or again, how can anyone enter a strong man's house and carry off his possessions unless he first ties up the strong man? Then he can plunder his house. I want to talk to you for a few brief moments from the topic. Who's tying you up? Who's tying you up? On this morning, um, we, we dealt with the subject, and we took our text from the second book of Corinthians, the fourth chapter, and we looked at um, verse number one. And as we look at that passage, and as we um, looked at the surrounding verses, we see where we were instructed not to fret when life happens to us, when things that are beyond our control happen, things that we have no control over, uh, we have to be of good cheer and we got to allow life to take its course and we know that the promises of God are still with us. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, that was the premise of this morning's lesson. But on tonight, um, I, I, and what I try to do, I try to be balanced in my lessons just as the Bible is balanced mm -hmm. when it comes to teaching. Uh, as we tried to show on last evening, uh, the Bible says just as much about fearing the Lord <coughs> as it says about having faith in the Lord as well. Amen. So we have to be balanced in our teaching. And, and, and even on tonight, um, uh, this morning, it, it kind of seemed like we were talking more about inaction. Let the Lord do it. And, and that's good, and we should. But on tonight, I, I want to explain something, that there is a thin line between inaction and action. There's a part that God plays, but there is a part that we play as well. And, and, and if, if we um, ask God for discernment, we will know where God's work ends and where our work begins. And, and, and on tonight, as we look at this text, Jesus is explaining to this group and to us that the work that is done, the work that we do is a reflection of who we serve and who we belong to. Before I get into that, I, I, I want to start off because maybe we can um, approach it from this vantage point. Oftentimes, um, we stress to our young people, uh, it's a part you play. Don't just let life have to, especially uh, we instruct our girls, especially, watch who you date. You know, dating is to gather data. You gather data. D -A -T -A. <clears throat> but once you get the data and you analyze it, you have to make a sound decision based on the data that you are collecting, right? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, we stress to them that, you know, uh, you better be careful being unequally yoked to unbelievers. And the Bible tells us that as well. And, and we, we approach it from a dating vantage point, right? And, 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 and I like what Joe Bean says about we, us being careful as we become acquainted with people in the courting process because he says if we get too acquainted with people 
even when the person or you know the people are not right for us, sometimes being that we didn't cut it off during the acquaintance process, we begin to become attached. Yeah. And even though it may be toxic for us, mm -hmm. now we are paralyzed or we are neutral where we are, we, we know we need to make a move, but yet and still we don't make the move because now we are attacked. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, that's, why, that's why it's important, unless I lose you. Uh, uh, that's why it's important because, you know, not to engage in fornication. Because the thing is, um, you know, um, once your body is gratified and endorphins and it's going on and hormones is moving and everything, even though you may be able to try to move on physically, but, uh, um, you know, mentally you'll be saying, I know this, no, this is not right for me, I'm moving on. But once your body get a taste of something, it'll begin to crave after what it engaged in. If, am I with anybody? Yes, sir. Come on. Uh, uh, um, you know, um, that's why uh, y'all probably heard the song, uh, my mind is telling me no, mm -hmm. yeah. but my body, my body is saying yeah. Uh, 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 you know, and, and that's true. That's true because the thing is, um, just like people market things to us, if they can get us to use certain things, even though our mind can say, well, that's not good for me, it's not benefiting me, and so on and so forth, but if they can get their product in us, our body will crave those products. Yeah, well, that's right. Come on, y'all, don't, don't leave me out here by myself. I ain't got to call the road, no. Uh, 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 you know, uh, I, I, I wish I never would have. Touch the McDonald's front <laughs> because every time I see that, <laughs> every time I see that M, you know, uh, you know, even though my mind made up, but my body is saying, mm, yeah, that's good for you. <laughs> but but the point to be made is some things people want to top your body because ultimately they want to top your body. But ultimately, if they can top your body, now they can top up your mind. Yeah, well, that's right. So the Bible says, Jesus says, how can someone spoil a strong man goods and unless first they tie up the strong man? All right. Mm -hmm. How can ultimately they get to the core thing unless they first bind the strong man, right? Mm -hmm. and, and Jesus is saying, you know, uh um, -uh, it, it, it's in layers. The devil starts, you know, he want to see how far he can go. Mm -hmm. If I can steal this, maybe I can steal that. Mm -hmm. If I can steal that, maybe I can steal this. Mm -hmm. but, but if he got the strong man tied up, however he have the strong man tied up, that's what gives him access to the household or to the goods. Yeah. Now, 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 maybe, and, and I'm, I'm glad y'all would be, but um, as they say, the Old Testament can be summarized as the New Testament concealed, mm -hmm. and the New Testament can be su summarized as the Old Testament revealed. Yeah. So I, I want to give you a vivid picture of the strong man who is tied, and y'all should know where I'm going. Judges the 16th chapter. Turn over there with me. Um, Judges the 16th chapter, and we're going to read uh, verse number six of Judges the 16th chapter, and, and we'll see how this plays out and see how this looks. So the Bible is talking about the strongest man we know in the scripture. I'm talking about physically. Uh, um, Samson. Yes, sir. The Bible says there was a woman who he flirted with by the name of Delilah. And the Bible tells us in verse number six, Delilah said to Samson, tell me the secret of your great strength, how you may be tied up and subdued. Remember what Jesus said? Jesus said, how can you bind the strong man 
Well, how, how they're the same. Yeah, how, how can you take the possessions of a strong man if, unless you first tie him up? And, and Samson, in our text, he played with certain things. Yeah, that's right. He he knew his father warned him about it. Mm -hmm. Don't date outside the covenant of Israel. Mm -hmm. But Samson, I, I'm I'm mighty, I'm strong. Who 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 can whoop me? Yeah. And, and he played with certain things, and, and and lo and behold, he met a woman by the name of Delilah. Delilah yes, sir. And, and Delilah, he didn't understand that she wasn't just there for the right reason. Look what the Bible says. The Bible says in verse number seven, Samson answered her, if anyone ties me with seven fresh bowstring that have not been dry, I'll become as weak as any other man. That's right. But look what verse number eight says. It says, then the rulers of the Philistines brought her seven fresh strings. Mm -hmm. so, so Delilah, she's trying to play both sides. Yeah. Oh, y'all, yeah, this is going to be beautiful when y'all see this. Uh, uh, let's go over back to Matthew because y'all got to see this. Y'all got to see this because I know I'm in the right text. I know I'm right where I need to be because uh, what Jesus is dealing with, you can see it right with Samson and Delilah. But in Matthew, uh, the 12th chapter, in verse number 29, and I'm going to read it again, but I want us to see the verses that follow. Look what the Bible says. The Bible, verse number 29 again, he says, or again, how can anyone enter a strong man's house and carry off his possessions unless he first tie up the strong man? Then he can plunder his house. Mm -hmm. Then verse number 30, he says, whoever is not with me is against me. Mm -hmm. Whoever does not gather with me scatters. And, and so I tell you, every kind of sin and slander can be forgiven, but blasphemy against the spirit will not be forgiven. Anyone who speaks a word against the son of man will be forgiven, but anyone who speaks against the Holy Spirit will not be forgiven either in this age or the age to come. And I might as well read it, but verse number 33 says, make a tree good and its fruit will be good and make a tree bad and its fruit will be bad for a tree is recognized by its fruit. Amen. That's right. So, Samson is dealing with Delilah. Right. Yes, sir. Come on. The woman who is saying, Samson, I love you. Mm -hmm. Samson, I got your best interest in mind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Samson, we're going to ride off in the sunset. We're going to have little Samsons. We're going to have a little daughters. We, we heavenly ever have this me and you, Samson. And the Bible says, yet it's still she's conspiring with the Philistines. That's right. uh -uh, she wants to know, how can I bind the strong man? Because in her mind, she was at there spoiling his goods. Yeah. And, and I, I asked the question, who is tying you up? Because you got to understand that we have an adversary, and the adversary primarily is not after just tying up the body. The adversary is at the time of the head, which is Christ. Mm -hmm. But he starts with the body, just like Delilah started with the body. Samson, how do I tie you up? Yeah, come on. Samson told her about the body, and, and she tried it two times. But the third time, Samson gave in, and now he said the head. Y'all got to see this. Y'all got to see this, right? And, and I know I'm telling the truth because look what the Bible says. The Bible says, Jesus said, any sin that is against the Son of Man. He talking about the flesh. Mm -hmm. Y'all know Jesus was both God and man. Yeah, that's right. He said anybody that talk against the flesh. Okay, he, he, he ain't born of no virgin. That ain't the Holy Spirit's baby. That, I, that's Joseph's baby. Amen. Jesus said you can be forgiven of that. Mm -hmm. All right. Come on. You, you start talking about the fleshly stuff. Things you can see, genealogies and all that, you can be forgiven of that. But when you start dealing with things that pertain to the Godhead, yeah. mm -hmm. things that the Holy Spirit has in place, mm -hmm. he says you won't be able to be forgiven of things that you ask, that you commit against the Holy Spirit in this life or the life to come. My Lord. My 
follow. Let me explain that. Let me explain that. We understand as long as we come to forgiveness, God will forgive us. But the point to be made is, when we blaspheme against the Holy Spirit, when we blaspheme against God's word, when we decide to disregard work, God's word, there's nothing else to save us. That's right. There you go. We become a reprobate mind. Mm -hmm. And once we become a reprobate mind, Jesus says there's no forgiveness because there's nothing. If you don't, if you ignore the word of God, there's nothing else that's going to convince you. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So, so, it's all right. Not all right, but you can be forgiven when you come against the body. Mm -hmm. But he says, ultimately, the enemy is after the head. And we can see it with Samson. Yes, sir. Come on. Man. Two times, tie. See, call the Philistines, get them. Samson broke loose. Okay, you're attacking the body. But when she ultimately was able to get to the head, that's when he was ultimately bind, that's when uh, he was ultimately conquered because he allowed them to get to the head. Mm -hmm. yes, and, and now as we look at it in our time, as we look at it in the church age, uh, it will be to our benefit to deal with things even as it's trying to tie us up in the body. In the body of Christ. Because ultimately, it's about the devil is trying to attack our head. It ain't really about us. We're just pawns on a chessboard. But but the enemy ultimately wants to discredit our head. And, 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 and the thing is, God has left some power in the body for us to do something so uh, our head won't be harmed. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, uh, let me just say this because unless we get too far the point we're trying to make. In the natural, we don't mind dealing with things when we know that it's time the situation down, time the organization down, we deal with it. Okay, okay. I ain't gonna call no names, but those who hung around the schoolhouse, and maybe you've been the person. When you get one bad child in the classroom, oh y'all ain't saying nothing because maybe it's the all of y'all. But but you get you get one bad child in the classroom, if that child continue to go unchecked. After a while, that child is going to spoil the rest of the children. It could, because if that child is able to get it away with it, the rest of the children are looking at it as well. And uh, uh, this is good. This is good. See, most of the time, our teachers can't educate our children because they are tied up with behavior. Who's tying you down? The, t the teacher would be better served Dealing with that child's behavior, even though it may cause discomfort with the parents. Mm -hmm. But in order to educate the other children, she has, he or she for that matter, has to deal with the behavior of the child that is disobedient or disrupting the learning process. That's right. That's right. Now we understand that in the classroom, mm -hmm. but even on the job. Uh uh, you know. If we allow one employee to get away with it, they set the precedence for all employees. Amen? Yes, right. Amen. Yes, right. uh, 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 if we allow, if we allow, um, if we allow one person to make the atmosphere hostile, mm -hmm. it ties us up where we're not able to be productive even on the job because I'm tied up. With all this mess that you are bringing to the organization. Mm -hmm. Sister Green, one person in the family. Sometimes you can't allow everything to be around your children. Mm -hmm. You grown, 
Or you want to be grown? I got other kids in the house. Yeah, that's it. And you want to act like you don't, you ain't a part of this family. You want to act like somebody else. You want to act like uh, uh, you don't respect the rules of this house. To the left. I know I'm telling the truth and I'm writing the text. Who's tying you up? Are you going to allow a disobedient child to hold you hostage in your house? Are you going to allow your son to bind you? He said, Jesus said, how can someone spoil the goods unless he first bind the strong man? The only way the children can run the daycare if they bind the daycare workers. Lord Jesus. But but we got to be willing to deal with confrontation, those who try to tie up the body, because ultimately, Christ is saying they cannot tie up the head. Amen. And I like what Jesus said. He said, now, either made the tree good or make the tree bad. Yeah. Either you for me or you against me. Amen. Jesus said, now either you are gathering with me or are you scattering from me? Yes, Jesus said, Jesus said, now either you disrupting the class or you helping the process of learning with the class. Yeah. And, and Jesus is blunt about this and Jesus is dealing with this because he says it only makes sense because he says even in the natural world, he said, even Satan and his kingdom. He said, Satan is not divided against Satan. That's right. That's the book. Yes, sir. He said, the demon of greed don't work against the demon of covetousness. Mm -hmm. They work together. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So when Jesus is explaining this to them, they are accusing him of working miracles due to the spirit of Beazabeth. The prince of the demons. And Jesus had to explain to him. He said, no, nah, that ain't how Satan work. And, and we can take a note from that ain't how Satan work. And he was letting them know that ain't how the kingdom work either. Either you're for me or you against me. Now the question once again is, who is tying you up? Because sometimes we allow Things to take place, and God want action. Mm -hmm. right. Amen. Come on, on y'all. I, I, I gotta give it to you because sometimes we sit back and we we want God to do everything. No, it's some stuff that He left for us to do. That's right. Amen. And all the time, it ain't comfortable. Mm -hmm. Amen. It ain't comfortable all the time, but it's something for <laughs> us to do, even when it's not comfortable. Amen. And, and y'all remember, they tried to tie Jesus up in this text. They tried to tie him up. See, uh, uh, matter of fact, let me see if I, I, I turn over there. Uh, matter of fact, I won't turn over there here. Well, yeah, let's turn over to um, verse number, let's look at verse number 46 of this same chapter. And let's look through the rest of the chapter. Look what the Bible says. The Bible says, while Jesus was still talking to the crowd, mm -hmm. his mother and brother stood outside yeah. wanting to speak to him. Yeah, that's it. And someone told him, your mother and brother are standing outside wanting to speak to you. Mm -hmm. But look what the Bible says. The Bible says, Jesus replied, who is my mother? Mm -hmm. Who are my brothers? Point to his disciples, he said, here are my mother and brother. And look what he said. He said, for whoever does the will of my father in heaven is my brother and sister. That's what he, said. He, he says now, he says now, it's based on the fruit of the tree. You can say all stuff, brother, brother, sister, sister. No, if you're doing the opposite of what brother, brother, sister, sister, mother, mother do, you ain't my mother. He said, those who keep the will of my father are my brother, my sister, and my mother. That's what he said. That's the book. Yes, sir. 
but they want to tie him up. Jesus, and you up here talking all this stuff in, in here, and, and your mother, your father's out here waiting for you. See, if you, if you read the Mark account, if you read the Luke account, his brothers and mothers came to him because they wanted to take Jesus because they thought he was out of his mind. Mm -hmm. uh, matter of fact, we'll read it. Let's go over to Mark real quick. We'll go over there. I don't want to just quote it. Let's go over there. We got time. We're doing pretty good on time. Uh, uh, let's go over to the book of Mark. Uh, chapter number three. Chapter number three of the book of Mark. And we'll look at why he said this concerning them as well. Uh, uh, Mark, the third chapter. And look what the Bible says. The Bible says in verse number 20, then Jesus entered the house and again a crowd gathered so that he and his disciples were not even able to eat. When his family heard about this, they went to take charge of him for they said he is out of his mind. And the teachers of the law who came down from Jerusalem said, he is possessed by Beelzebub, yes. by the prince of demons. He is driving out demons. So Jesus called them over to him and began to speak to them in parables. How can Satan drive out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. If a house is divided against itself, that house cannot stand. And if Satan opposes himself and is divided, he cannot stand. His end has come. Mm -hmm. And then um, he says the same thing over in verse number 30. He says, he said, because they were saying he has an impure spirit. Then Jesus' mother and brothers arrived standing outside. And he sent someone to call him, and a crowd was sitting around him. And they told him, your mother and your brother are outside looking for you. Mm -hmm. And he said, who are my mother mm -hmm. and my brother? Mm -hmm. my mother, my brother. Yes, sir. So, once again, how does this tie into <coughs> who's tying you up? Because the thing is, oftentimes, when we have, uh, when we have physical ties, sometimes... We don't want to go again physical time. Mm -hmm. But we know Jesus should be preeminent in all things. Yes. Right. Amen. Look what Jesus told us in Matthew the 10th chapter, verse number 34 and 37, uh, 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 through 37. He said, think not that I am come yes. to send peace on the earth. Mm -hmm. well. I came not to send peace, but a sword. For I am come to set a man at variance against his father, mm -hmm. and the daughter against her mother, and the daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law, and a man's foes shall be they of his own household. <laughs> right. And then look what he says in verse number 37. He says, he that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And he that loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. Now, I, I, I'm closing, I'm closing, but I, I hope y'all seen it. But look what the Bible is explaining to us. Jesus is talking about the kingdom of Satan. Y'all y'all with me? Y'all with me? He's talking about the kingdom of Satan. He says, now, how can I cast out bad spirits if I got a bad spirit, right? All right? So he's explaining, in order for me to be able to do this, he's talking about the strong man is Satan. Mm -hmm. He's saying, in order for me to be able to bind out Satan, the strong man must be bound. Y'all got to see this. Y'all got to see this. Y'all got to see this. Mm -hmm. He's saying, now, I'm binding the strong man on your behalf. Well, mm -hmm. yes. I'm taking the goods back. I'm redeeming my people from the strong man. He's talking about Satan. Go back and read it on your own. Because he said, he said, I bind Satan. That's how I'm able to do what I'm doing, right? Mm -hmm. Now when we look at what they were trying to tie Jesus up with. Y'all got to see this. Y'all got to see this. Y'all got to see this. I'm going there, brother, because I'm trying to get it out. I'm trying to birth it. But look what the Bible says. The Bible says they tried to tie Jesus up 
with his closest relationships. Yeah, that's right. That's right. Your mother, your brothers out there, you need to be dealing with them. Be preoccupied with that. But Jesus says that my mind ain't just on my closest relationships because I'm coming to redeem all mankind from Satan. Yeah. Right? That's right? And now he flips the script in Matthew the 10th chapter. He says, now, being that I didn't just attach myself to my closest physical relationships, you as the body of Christ when it comes to your relationship with the head, even though it may be conflict with your closest relationship, you got to be willing to denounce or do whatever you got to do in order to please God. I see. I see. Matthew, the Tim chapter, he said, he that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. Because there's going to come a time Y'all know how we get crazy? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we're going to have to stick with the word. Yeah. I can't follow you on that. Mm -hmm. The word say this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm standing with my Lord and Savior. Mm -hmm. It may be uncomfortable. It may be. But, 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 but I love my father. Yeah. I love my Lord and Savior enough mm -hmm. to let you know that you are our uh, order. Oh, yes, Okay, last passage. This is the last passage. This is what Paul said in Galatians, the first chapter. He said in Galatians, the first chapter, and I'm going to give y'all time to turn over there. We just studied it, but I'm going to give y'all time to turn over there. Galatians, the first chapter, beginning at verse number 14. Look what the Bible says. The Bible says, this is Paul talking. He says, and I profited... In the Jews' religion, above many of my equals in my own nation, mm -hmm. being more exceedingly zealous mm -hmm. of the traditions of my fathers, right? That's it. Of my father. Then look what it says in verse number 15. But mm -hmm. when it pleased God who yeah. separated me, yeah. I did have ties to them at one point. But he says, who separated me from my mother's womb and called me by his grace to reveal his son in me that I might preach him among the heathens. Immediately I then confer not with flesh and blood. Paul said, part of the reason I was tied up in all these traditions and handing down religions was because of my folk. But he says, in order for me to be pleasing to God, God separated me. Yeah. Right. And on tonight, why would I bring a message like this? What, who tying you up? Because oftentimes we, we are having a lot of trepidation and, and, and we having a lot of uh, despondency. Mm -hmm. And we know what we got to do. Come on. But we continue to delay it. Amen. We we talking about a thin line between action and inaction. Well, sometimes we we know what we got to do. We know who's the problem. We know what needs to be done. But yet we still put it off. We ignore it. But Jesus said, Jesus said, just like I didn't give in to my mother, brother, you got to be willing to do the same thing on my behalf. Is it comfortable? No. But, but, you know, we got to get to a point. We know something that's toxic for our relationship with the Lord. I wish more young people was here so they can hear it. Maybe they, they see it on the broadcast. Oh, sure. But, but you got to be careful. You got to be careful who you entertain and how long you entertain. Amen. As they say, you get Satan to ride before long, he'll be driving the car. Amen. So you, you, you have to be careful. When you don't check things in the order to check. And I'm going to say this and I'm going to leave y'all alone. Amen. When we look to the front of the church, it's easy for everybody 
to monitor the preacher and his actions and when he get off course and you know, when he say the wrong thing, and it's easy for everybody to catch him at the back door. Uh, you said that wrong, or your grammar is off, and so on and so forth. Yeah. It's easy to do that, right? But that don't just apply to the preacher. The whole house needs to be in subjection to the head. The whole body needs to be in subjection to the head. And what's tying you up? What's keeping you from protecting the head? Amen. Do you have more allegiance mm. to your foot than the head? Mm -hmm. Do you have more allegiance to your arm than the head? Jesus. Jesus said it's better to cut off your arm or pluck out your eye than to enter hell with both eyes and both hands. Yes. Yes, so that don't just apply to the preaching. All right. Anybody that's tying you up, <clears throat> you've got to be willing to deal with it. That's right. Yes, Amen. And the dealing shouldn't be so uncomfortable because we are believers, right? Amen. Yes, it shouldn't be so uncomfortable. Amen. But even if it is, mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to have Jesus deny me saying that you love mother and father more than me. That's the message on tonight because I, I don't want to be guilty of lauding us in the flowery bed of ease and saying that Jesus don't take care of everything. No, it's something that we need to take care of. Amen. Amen. I, I, now, now, I know the blood ain't on my hands now because I got it out. It's some stuff that we need to take care of. He said, he said, it don't happen until the body is tied up. Then the enemy can do what they want to do. Yeah. Yeah. On tonight, on tonight. I'm at a point now. You ain't got to like me. You, you ain't got to be my friend. You ain't got to follow me on Instagram. You ain't got to follow me on Facebook. You ain't got to follow me on Twitter. You ain't got to watch the YouTube channel. Mm -hmm. Amen. If you want me to compromise my relationship with my... Well, if you don't respect my head, you don't respect me. Jesus. Amen. Amen. Jesus. If you respect my head, we can deal together. Amen. But if you don't respect my head, you don't respect the body. Amen. 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 That's the message on tonight. Amen. I believe the house is saved, but I, I want to encourage somebody. Amen. You know what you got to do. You got to do it. You can't keep. We know what we got to do. Amen. Amen. Let us be standing in the song that's selected, Brother Green.